Hi, welcome to this video in which I will try to explain the characteristics of piano playing and piano teaching in Vienna. <clears throat> I have often been asked if there exists a Viennese piano school, as we know it for instance from Russia, France, Hungary and other countries. Therefore it is perhaps necessary to define first how does it come that we can speak of a school? In my opinion, it needs first a very consistent technical and musical educational program which clearly defines necessities with what one has to learn in the first, the second, the third year and so on. This is usually verified by a commission in an exam at the end of every academic year. And second, of course, each school has also its special priorities concerning interpretation and repertoire. The first of these two parts does not exist in Vienna, nor does there exist a strict program what one has to learn each year, nor are there exams at the end of each academic year. In our studies there are only two commissional exams, the bachelor and the master. For these exams, of course, we have detailed requirements of the program, which has to be elaborated during the years of studying, but which allows, however, a great flexibility in the choice of the compositions. The main focus lies on the tradition and on the repertoire in which the Viennese classic has, of course, a high value. So, in my opinion, there does not exist a Viennese piano school. This is perhaps so in my opinion there does not exist a Viennese piano school. This has perhaps something to do with the fact that for instance in Moscow and St. Petersburg most of the teachers were Russians, in France French, in Hungary Hungarians, etc. In Vienna we have a long tradition of teachers coming from different countries, from different ethnic origins which may be a consequence of the multilateral Austrian-Hungarian Empire. And this constellation has not changed. In my piano department at the Vienna University of Music there are about 25 teachers from 10 different countries teaching. In our second piano department there are even more foreign teachers than Austrians. However, there is a Viennese tradition of playing and teaching piano. How is this possible? Many people from all over the world are coming to Vienna to study music here. The more time they are spending in Vienna, the more they are beginning to take over traditions of our musical education. The best example is perhaps the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, where nowadays there are many members who have come from other countries. Nevertheless, the New Year's concert, and of course not only this, sounds still the same as it sounded 50 years ago. There is a kind of tradition which all members of the orchestra learn to adapt to. The same thing happens in the piano education. So this school is not a school of a special technique, of a special virtuosity, of a special shaping a unique sound, but there is a kind of approach to music and to interpretation of music which may be called characteristic. How did this tradition develop? Just an example. Alexander Jena, my second piano teacher at the former Academy of Music today's university, and me, we have both been pupils of Richard Hauser. Hauser has studied piano with Paul Weingarten, a pupil of Emil von Sauer who himself was a pupil of Franz Liszt. Now we know that Liszt has learned to play the piano with Karl Czerny, who studied piano with Beethoven. This is just one example, of course there exists many others. But this may explain why the teaching of tradition has a special value in our education. What's the kind of this tradition? We should not believe that we really know how Beethoven wanted his compositions to be played. The reports of, for instance, his pupils Ries and Schindler are too contradictions to permit us to believe 
in being able to create an authentic interpretation. So let us think rather of two of the most prestigious Austrian pianists as representatives, Alfred Brendel and Paul Badura Skoda. Then we are able to work out some common characteristics and they concern their intellectual approach to music. The following criterions are therefore of great importance. Stylistic characteristics, phrasing in connection with the spoken language, articulation in connection with the spoken language, the detailed analysis of formal specialities in a composition, the knowledge about motivical connections within a piece right down to the smallest details, and finally to get as close as possible to the intentions of a composer. That's why the so-called Urtex editions are a must in our interpretations. It's striking that, as far as I know, the special word Urtext exists only in the German language. Sometimes in the English language the German word Urtext can be found, but usually we find original text in French version originale, in Italian versione originale, and as far as I know also in the Russian language there is no special word for it, as there isn't in other languages. That shows that an as much as possible exact reproduction of a piece has an essential meaning for us. We use editions from Universal Edition, Henle, Bärenreiter, Breitkopf und Hertel, etc. to point out just the main important ones. And it is remarkable that these editions are all coming from German-speaking countries. Of course, today you can find reprints and licensed editions all over the world. But the scientific elaboration is mainly done in this above-mentioned area. These Urtext editions are also the absolute necessary sources for detailed analysis of the compositions. The consideration with stylistic questions is a logical consequence. Again, we use a lot of German sources, not forgetting, of course, that also in other cultural centers we can find very important sources, as for instance in France, François Couperin. But in total, they are in a minority. The main books we are using are Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, Leopold Mozart, Johann Joachim Quanz, Daniel Gottlob Türk, Friedrich Wilhelm Marburg, etc. One of the most important sections in all these sources is always dedicated to the so-called Articulation. The musical Articulation is again a word for which there does not exist an exact translation in other languages. It has something to do with special manners of speaking, the so-called prosody, which includes all characteristics of a language. So the sound of a speech is completely different if you speak German, English, French, Italian or Russian. We realize that there is a completely different way of binding words or syllables together or not. The German language is separating much more than, for instance, the French one. But also punctuation marks and a comma are pronounced in another way in German than in other languages. The connection of words, setting of punctuations, generating of phrases, pauses, accents, vowels, consonants, etc. These all can be transposed to music. And these are all making the characteristics of what we call Tonsprache. In connection with the articulation we also concentrate on phrasing. This has an essential meaning in our way of performing music. In one of the main sources about performing music of the 18th and 19th century, Gottlob Daniel Türk gives us a wonderful example how the changement of just one comma turns the same word order into the opposite meaning. Unfortunately, it is not possible to translate it the same way into another language. The German sentences are er verlor sein Leben nicht, nur sein Vermögen. 
Now, comma, changed. Er verlor sein Leben, nicht nur sein Vermögen. The first sentence means, he did not lose his life, just his fortune. The second one, he also lost his life, not only his fortune. And therefore, phrasing by means of articulation seems to us so important in the interpretation of music. Inseparable with this is the analyzing of a piece and of its motives. Coming back to Alfred Brendel in one of his books, we can find a comparing of motives in Schubert's last three piano sonatas, and this takes about 40 pages in this book. Paul Badura Skoda, he too has written books about all these details, especially about Bach and Mozart. And these books are still highly appreciated all over the world. And even the German composer Johannes Brahms set high value on these criteria, as we can read in a biography. He strongly insisted that his pupils, if they wanted to become composers, have to deconstruct especially sonatas of Mozart and Beethoven, meticulously, and that they have to analyze the construction of these compositions onto the smallest details as well as to get aware of the musical sense of each little note. This should sharpen the feeling of understanding, to refine the musical perception and the sense of formal structures. Now some words to technique. This all characterizes our approach to interpretation. But this does not mean that technique and virtuosity are placed in the background in our education. But we prefer to subordinate technique to the musical expression based on stylistic criteria, articulation and phrasing. Technique is not the end in itself. Technique serves in the best way possible the necessities of the parameters mentioned above. Of course, also the shaping of sound is important but perhaps not in the same way as, for instance, in the French school. A citation of Arnold Schoenberg may explain this. He demanded, Music shall not beautify. Music has first of all to be true. The main aim of composers of the first Viennese school of composing, like Haydn, Mozart and Beethoven, and the second one, like Schoenberg, Bergweber, was to express psychological conditions and their imminent conflictive tensions. Therefore, Haydn, Mozart and especially Beethoven and Schubert have made the first steps to expressionism. Already Robert Schumann said, Beethoven and Schubert are those masters who were able to translate each state of life into musical language. Apart from all these facts was a special Viennese approach. I think it is the sense of an instrumental joie de vivre. Of course, we take all this knowledge seriously, but we don't want to demonstrate, look, what I know about this piece. Finally, the emotions based on this knowledge have nevertheless to be spontaneous. Intellect and emotion have to come to an equilibrated harmony. This doesn't at all mean that there aren't similar efforts in other schools and in other cultural environments, but the difference, in my opinion, may be that by the same premises we are making another distinction of the perspectives and the evaluation. In the following video I will give a few examples in which I will try to point out some of these aspects mentioned above. Thank you and goodbye.